early pressure jungle. I don't really think they want to deal with it. So I'm wondering if uh, they're going to opt for that Lee Sin pick again. Wow. But they're hovering over Jace right now. I don't think they'll first pick a Jace. There's no way they'll do that. I mean, he's been hit so many times by the nerf hammer. I honestly, uh, I honestly don't think he's that bad in the top lane right now. I really okay. don't. I really don't think he's that bad of a top laner. But I just don't see first picking it. I mean, it, it limits your team comp so much if you do that. And they're just going to pick a hard engage comp if you, if you early pick a Jace. Well, let's see what they do if I go with here. And I, I really wonder if they're, I mean, if they do pick up a Jace, school po pop kind of thing, but, but we'll see a trundle in here. To go. We'll just throw it all together. Just everything with the poke. <laughs> <laughs> right, God. Uh, but right now, they're still just hovering on that one. And I want to see what all sides of the team's going to go with here. I mean, they had such a, a strong lineup, and I'm actually glad to see that switch to Thrush last second right, because that, Dio's so damn good. Yeah, that's a really safe pick. I like that. Ban, which is one of the champions that gives Thrush a little bit more trouble. Um, but I think it's really good. Even if they pick Leona, Thresh is pretty good against Leona. It's a, just a universally good pick. All right, well, also, well, they're taking the time here. It seems like maybe they were expecting to get Thresh or something like that, but there's so many different things they can pick here. And if you're on All-Star World's you know, side, if you're in this kind of situation, you see the supports picked, like, we always wonder, at least as casters, what they, or what's going through their minds? Like, do we, should we pick support now, not give anything away, being on that red side? I mean, I mean, that's really, really depends on what you want to go in with this. Um, I mean, some people like Actually, picking the owner in the thrash, even though it's a little bit rough. Lane, uh, maybe they do want to just put their support out there right away, and then just pick a strong jungle pick. Vi is still up. Uh, Wukong, Pantheon jungle. There's so many. Uh, I want to see that by the end of the uh, end of today. RNA promised me he'd show it to me, so maybe we'll see it if they go to the finals. Looks like, wow, so Gragas and Yasuo, they were banned out last game. Gragas was taken away by Fierce Gaming, and Yasuo was taken away by Ocelot World. I wonder if that's going to be the Gragas jungle, or that either they're going to put a mid lane in the Yasuo top. I think it's going to be the Gragas jungle, but actually, no, if I remember last game, they banned Yasuo, so. Yeah, yes, they banned Yasuo, and then uh, Fierce Gaming banned out Gragas. Yeah, it looked like they, I'm not sure why they would ban him, and they just pick him first rotation the next game. Yeah. I, I'm actually not sure if Ocelot's even a Yasuo player. I uh, would imagine. He isn't. He played a lot of Gragas when they were practicing as a team trying to get into the Coke League. Yeah, so I wouldn't say that would be like going a, middle. Yeah, it doesn't seem like an Ocelot type champion either. So I can see him being top lane in the course of Gragas mid. And Gragas is a pretty safe champion. It doesn't really have that many bad matchups. Even if you counter pick him at this point, it's like, oh, hey, we'll just put him in the jungle. So that, I like I like that pick. That is very true. And also, even in the top lane, we saw Kevin do that yep. uh, not so long ago, too. And, you know, to me, JWoww is a really aggressive top laner. Like I was saying before, he plays, you know, Kazakh as well. He's really well known for his Kazakhs, really aggressive, kind of high damage champions. And it wouldn't be surprising to actually see him on that Yasuo in the top lane, but we do see Lee Sin and Jax picked up. That's that actually a scary they, two picks. That's actually one of the reasons why they banned their neck in there. They wanted to play the Jax, it looks like. Uh, neck is one of the harder counters, uh, harder lanes for Jax to go against. And I guess they feel like there's just no picks that Jax would have any trouble with. Even if they pick Siobhan at this point, Jax is still not that bad against that. Um, but they could still potentially pick like a Mundo or something, or, or, uh, or an Asus, so we'll see. Mundo is exactly right up Morden's alley as well. I'm not sure if he's playing it too much lately, but you know, I'm thinking about this. If you think how Nim played last game, you know, on that vibe, he went for one, maybe two ganks, you know, towards the bottom side of that, but that was it. And how's he going to fare in Lee Sin? Because you kind of have to be aggressive. Yeah, Lee Sin's a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. He's a bit more mechanically intense champion. So after that Vi game, I'm not quite sure. And they're just going to go in with the Leona. It, Leona versus Thresh is kind of a weird lane. Thresh really bullies you all the way up until level six. And then once you hit six, you could potentially just instantly kill somebody in Leona. And I mean, that's just any Leona lane. She just does so much CC and damage. It's insane. Um, and Ezreal's the perfect person with that. You just hit the Leona combo, and then ultimate with Ezreal, and then shift into them, and you just pop somebody instantly. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's pretty good picks out of them. And they also have Ezreal, who's going to be able to get away from the Jax. And, of course, his Mystic Shot doesn't really get affected by uh, Jax's uh, dodge and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, just remind, remind you guys at home if you're just joining us today, every champion is available on the 4.1 patch for this tournament. Uh, it, but Ezreal has, bugged, a, he? He has a slight, yeah, a slight bug to him where his Q will actually reset his auto attack animation, which it can be a positive or a negative thing depending yeah. on how you really look at it. But all players have been informed about it, so Haydal will know about that. And it looks like, I hope we don't see that Maokai. Oh, yeah, no, I don't want to see, I don't think they can get Maokai because they have Lee Sin already, but I'm surprised they aren't picking the Vayne into the Ezreal. That's a pretty good pick against that. It's also a pretty good pick up against Lee Sin because you Demmer away, which goes in. Uh, but it looks like they want to offer the, the Sivir. On top of that. So it looks 
like they have a really big team fight comp. Um, both teams have heavy team fight comps. You, you're probably going to see a lot of dragon fights this game. Because, um, I mean, Ocelot's team has that Gragas Yasuo combo, followed up by Leona. And of course, you're going to have Ezreal backing it up. And then Fury's game is going to have that Orianna Wombo combo. I mean, you can even put the ball in Jax or Lee Sin. They can jump in and just pop somebody. I think it's looking how fast they are too. I mean, you have the the speed, the distance out of Oriana. You have the ultimate out of Severe. You have uh, the Talisman Ascension. If we do see Thresh go for that, like that is going to be ridiculously hard to get away from. And oh my God, is it going to be the monkey? Is We've it going to be about the monkey? It. I, I want to say it for later if we potentially will see it. But if that does get, you know, we, we went to dinner the other night and we actually talked specifically about Wukong for I think it was about 10, 15 minutes. You're talking about it's how I'm going. To I'll talk why he's so damn good in the jungle, or if he will be there. Uh, I mean, he could okay. be top lane or the jungle at this point. But Yasuo, Wukong is also another good combo. You got AoE knockup. Um, but I think Wukong is one of the most underplayed jungles in the game because he just has amazing base stats. He has Shivana's passive. He has their exact passive, pretty much. You get the same stats out of it. And then you have a 4.8 AD ratio on the ultimate. That's the highest AD ratio in the entire game. And it's AoE. It's AOE on top of that. So, and then you also have Armor Shred. I don't know. I just love the monkey. You have, like, you have attack speed steroid off your E. Yep. I mean, and your ultimate. And you can also do a lot of really skilly ganks yes. with his uh, with his W. It Actually, might... you were sorry. You were talking about this exact matchup that night because you were talking about Lee Sin versus Wukong. As I mentioned, what about Lee Sin? Because he can see where you're going, and you you pointed out something specifically for this. If you're yeah, a good you Wukong can, player, if you're actually really good with Wukong's uh, W, his decoy, you can block Lee Sin's skill shots with that. And then if you, if you take that Lee Sin skill shot with your W, you just outright win the trade. So I don't really feel like Wukong. It's pressure that much by. And it, if Lee Sin decides to counter gank a Wukong's level 6 gank, he's just going to get knocked up in the AoE. Mm -hmm. So I really, really like Ocelot's team. Huge AoE wombo comp, really nice front line. Uh, you're going to have the Leona and the Wukong going in. And then you also have Yasuo is going to be flying in there, and Greg is just going to be knocking everybody all over the place. So, uh, I don't know. I, I really like Ocelot's comp. Maybe I'm just a, I, too I, big a fan of the No, monkey. no, I agree. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, he can get in there so easily because of that stealth. Like, he can just appear top lane, knock you up, and then Yasuo is going to get the kill. Or yeah. you appear bottom lane, set up Leona at the same time. And then on top of that, Sivir took cleanse. She didn't take barrier. So she's going to be almost a sitting duck for that Wukong gang. I really don't what? like that she took cleanse. I mean, you could stop a Leona stun. That's literally That's all you can stop on the entire team. So you're just going to pretty much instantly die to a Gragas Yasuo combo. Or Wukong. If anybody gets on her, she's dead. See, and I'm definitely with you about Ocelot's composition, but Fierce Gaming, they're fighting for their their tournament hopes here. They're going to be on the blue side. We have also on the red side. Remember, also, if they win this game, they will advance into the semifinals to play against Pain Gaming a little bit later on today. You know, I've actually never seen the Yasuo Jax top lane matchup. I'm not quite sure how that goes. I, I can see it being pretty even, though, uh, at least for the first six levels. But of course, uh, Gragas pressures Oriana pretty hard once you hit your ultimate. Um, and even at level two, you can all in with a body slam. And then, of course, you can have Wukong ultimate that's going to be potentially ganking off of that. So. Bottom lanes, or bottom and mid are going to see a lot of fights. All right. Well, I really want to see this game kick off. I feel like this is one of those games that it gets really explosive really quickly. Yeah. With, with just the whole comp that both teams have. Yeah. I mean, I could see this just snowballing either way for either team. They just have these great team fights. Uh, yeah. This should be one explosive dragon fight, and it's just going to completely turn turn the tides of the game, probably. And fierce game. I mean, we're probably seeing an invade here out of this team, or out of, out of any team pretty much throughout the entire uh, weekend so far. And it's going towards the blue up. They wanted to nice away from Wukong, and I, I'm assuming since you're such a big fan of Wukong, you know how he works in the jungle, but he's, I'm assuming, not that blue intense. I mean, it's nice to have blue, but I don't really think they care. And they have Ezreal that's going to be sitting there watching that. Unless he gets caught watching the blue, uh, Wukong could probably just go for their blue. And that's one of the reasons also why people stopped invading on top of that, because all the junglers became smart and like, oh, you took my blue, I'll take your blue. You took my red, I'll take your red. And they just always just ended up in a trading situation. But they might catch Gragas here. Oh, also, the nice word. Oh, wow. A nice word over the wall. And he takes the body slam level one to escape from that thresh hook. Is that going to affect him in lane too much? I mean, I think he'll be fine. He might have a little bit of farming troubles and get pressured in. But that's his case even if you have uh, any of the other abilities in Gragas. All right, well, right now we're going to see Morden start at his red buff here. We're going to have him start over at his red buff as well. And let's, let's talk about the lanes a bit. You said top lane, you don't really see a Yasuo Jax combo, so we can skip over that one. We talked a little bit about uh, Oriana and Gragas, how 
level two, you can probably all in an Orianna. At level six, it becomes really dangerous for an Orianna. Is there anything else you can tell us about this uh, this lane? Because I'm really surprised. The Orianna actually took her uh, shield level one. And wow, we actually saw Counter Bay coming out of All Star World. They get 1984 very low on life. They actually, over the flash, they go for the ignite. Dio's getting taken very low by the turret, but he does escape and they get the first blood. But here he comes in from the side. He does have the red buff. He does get the ignite. He's gonna be able to pick up this kill. Kada will go down, but it will allow the red. Well, at least D to escape. That's so much early aggression. I think it's a really big mistake because he took that one summoner. And wow, right now, because Morton did spot Nim towards the bottom side of the map, he's going for an invade here. He's going to take away this blue buff, and this could be huge. Yeah, I like Morton's play on this. I mean, taking at least his blue is not. You're like, oh, I'm going to have a little bit less energy regen. It's not that bad, but of course, he's going to get a little bit of level advantage off of that, assuming he does get it. Oh, he's going for it here. He does have Smite available. He's going to be able to lock this one up. And you can see, ooh, that was close. Nim, it's just a little bit too late there. And it's unfortunate because he could have maybe gone for the, the counter jungle on his side if he wanted to. But he did head up towards that. And that does give more that nice advantage. And the thing is, earlier hits level 6, more dangerous this is going to get. Yeah, you might see a gank on mid. Uh, also, it might actually body slam flash into Oriana, but I mean, she seems to know he's there. So nothing's going to happen on that. Now let's take a look at this top lane, because we're both not really too familiar with how this lane works out between these two champions. And JY right now looks like he's just shoving the lane. He does have a little bit of a CS advantage, but obviously that will be uh, changed up here when Accelerate is able to get the CS. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised that he's just pushing him in like this. I guess Yasuo has a lot of poke with his, uh, his Q. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming Jax just wants to farm into the turret until he's 6, because Jax is not the strongest champion until he's level 6, so I think he just wants to get those levels and happily farm under the turret right now. And what's your thoughts on the items that he actually went for? Because he has a Dorn shield compared to the Dorn's Blade of JWoww. I think that's definitely the way to go. I mean, Yasuo does a lot of auto attack damage, and assuming you do take a bad trade, it'll be good for you. Oh, and the Q lands from Nim. He does get the slow with the red buff, but JWoww, he has Flash available. Looks like he's actually going to be forced to use it here as he does get ignited. He does get the knockoff. He's actually not going to use it, not even going to commit that. And look at the damage he did turning this around. You know, that's actually a huge uh, miscommunication error. Um, on that part, because Jax had just used his uh, stun proc on uh, while he's farming into the turret. Yeah, really unfortunate, but now Dio getting caught a little bit there. We see the aggression coming out of Fierce Gaming. They didn't look too strong in that last game uh, with their AD carry support, but they're doing a lot better this time here, though they're behind a little bit in CS. But you can see, I mean, they're just shoving Offset World out of this bottom lane, and you kind of expected that though until we, uh, we see Leona hit six. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Thresh just has uh, a little bit too much control over that lane. It's a, it's a ranged champion against a melee, and Leona, even if she does hit her E, you can play her mid-air, and it will stop her from doing anything. And you can just disengage off of that and poke her down. Which is, I'm going to go and assume that's what happens, since Leona's so chunked here. And right now, we do see him heading down towards the bottom side. He's not going to be spotted in that tri-bush. He knows Halo doesn't have flash, as well as Dude. All it takes is one hook. Tomax is going to be going in here. If he gets this hook, it's going to be very dangerous. He's going to go for Halo. Doesn't land as Halo does arc. That was a mistake to go for the Ezra. I mean, of course yeah. he's going to... Sitting duck, but Leona that doesn't have flash. Like remember, you took her flash uh, in the early part of the game. You want to go for that sitting duck and get that that clean kill that you can get. I think there's only one man that's able to do that or is allowed to, and that's Mad Life against Ezreal. <laughs> yeah, Mad Life. Like all right, hook the guy top lane from bottom. All right, good, good job. <laughs> that's easy. Give me Lan something harder. Lantern, lantern me in. Lantern me in. Oh man, but I'm just picturing somebody flying from bot lane with a lantern all the way up the top. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, I'm sure there's some way to make that happen, but you see the damage on Haydal taken right there. Might even be somewhat of a bait here. It's Morton going to be sitting inside that bush. He's not going to be spotted by Ward here, and all it takes is that one engage, though Haydal does have his barrier off. They do see engage happen. The, the fight coming in perfectly right there, but they're able to commit to this. Morton chasing him down, doesn't have red buff. It looks like Tomex is going to be able to escape off of this. Yeah, really so weird to see the pre-6 Wukong gank, and on top of that, he mechanically failed. If you go in with Wukong like that, you want to auto Q since it's an attack reset. And he could have got off a lot of extra damage on that. And he still had his flash up, so I guarantee if Wukong mechanically played that gank better, he would have had the kill. Maybe it just kind of shows a little bit of uh, a lack of playing Wukong out of Morden, or maybe nerves. I don't, I don't know what it is, but you definitely do know Wukong if you <laughs> play him quite a bit and you're such a big fan of him. But in the meantime, we do see Ocelot doing a fairly good job mid lane. He's actually keeping up dead even at CS currently. He's a little bit behind just because of that wave being there, but he's having no troubles. Yeah, that's just the Gragas Oriana matchup. Once you get a couple levels, especially once you get level six, um, you just pressure that Oriana because you can instantly kill her in one combo if she's out of position. And if the jungler decides to show up too, you're like dead to rights. <laughs> and right now, Morden, he's still just jungling away. He's only level 5 right now. And he does have a little advantage over Nim, who will be getting a little bit of CS off of uh, mid lane here, as well as some experience. 
top lane though, I still want to keep an eye on that because Jaywell, he's hitting level 6, as well as Accelerator, who's actually going in for him. The Windmall, not really going to do anything right there. And you can see the damage that Accelerator is able to put down him. He was the kind of the saving grace, I want to say, for uh, Furious Gaming, as he was able to get the first one on JWoww in game number one. Yeah, that lane's going about as they expected to go. Looks like Jax was a little bit pressured in the early game. Um, but now that he hit level 6 and he's going to go and buy, I'm pretty sure he'll be able to scrap it out with him. He does have uh, 800 gold to spend. Let's see what he picks up here. Maybe some boots. Probably a Vamp Scepter, maybe? No, nope, Vamp Scepter. There you yeah. go. Just, you're, just, you're just spot on. You know exactly what they're going to buy here. Uh, but now, right now, Morden going for red buff. Going to be hitting level 6 momentarily. There it is. Yeah, I'm actually really curious where he's going to go for the gank on. You have to remember, Sivir only has cleanse, so if they link up some good CC on that, instantly kill him. Same thing with Orianna. If Gragas knocks that Orianna back in, she's dead. There's also the other way around that, too. If he gets the knock up first, and also like, can't possibly miss that barrel, but... I think he got spotted by that minion running around. Some of the weirdest minion pathing ever. <laughs> It's like that one minion in the the Reddit, 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 Reddit video that you saw. It actually chased someone around the entire map. But right now, he's not able to commit anything off that just yet. Going to be spotted by that ward right there. And he's going to head up towards this top I actually side. don't think he got spotted by that. Oh, he did. If you hug that edge, you actually don't get spotted by that ward. But that ward's definitely <laughs> going to spot him. Yeah, that was definitely going to make it happen. He's heading up towards the top side. So already very, very low on life. Not gonna, unfortunately, not going to land right there. there. But blue buff. That's the way yet again. Keep uh, Oriana behind right now. Or at least keep that blue buff away from her. And he's going to be able to at least stall him in with Ocelot coming from the side looking for a fight. Yeah, it looks like Orion's going to be a little bit ahead of him on that. But you have to look, Jax is so pressured in top that Yasuo can just come down. And Jax isn't going to be able to do anything about this. It'll be a 3v2. And Jax isn't even healthy either from that trade that we just saw happen from top side. But right now, it's like we're going to see the Smite Steel actually going to be taken away. Nim does get the one, but he gets knocked up for his troubles. The ultimate out of, out of Gragas, unfortunately, doesn't land because of the flash. But he gets the kill the way. He gets the blue buff. And now... Moyd's head towards his top side. He's looking for a kill on the Jax. He got that smite, but at what cost? I mean, they just delivered the blue buff right back to him. I mean, his best blue buff transfer in A. <laughs> but we're in Brazil. Yo, we're saying in A, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, the bottom lane has gotten a little less wonky, a little less action happening. It's just to say that they start to battle it out right here. But CS, Haydel still has a nice lead. I'm about 10 CS currently. And is the lane going to start to snowball here because... Did you see those threat six. mechanics right there? He pulled that minion into the server could last hit him. He planned that. This guy's an amazing Thresh player. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Say, call him best Thresh player BR. Yeah. Uh, but right now, I mean, it's just kind of... Let's just keep farming. I'm not really going for any kills. Dude is level 6. Haydel is still only level 5, though, because he's forced to back away. Yeah, but actually, the server lane, the server's going to hit uh, level 6 before the uh, Ezreal. And they also have that pretty big wave piling in. And on top of the Ezreal's a little bit chunk, so... Um, could be pretty dangerous for either side. Right now we do see Morden going to be taking his own loop up here. Unfortunately didn't have that when he used his ultimate last time, so he's not going to have that reduced cooldown on that ultimate. But 40 seconds left, not that much. He does have flash available. He is spotted by that ward. And it looks like Nim is here to kind of counter or counter gank this, but that so just gave really it away. early Sivir ult. I'm not yeah. quite sure what she's going at with that. I didn't know if they were going to try to run into them and fight a fight since Lee Sin was right behind them with the boots of mobility. Um, it's kind of really weird using the Sivir ult. I don't know. Playing a little bit scared. Yeah, I mean, I think they realize like what's on the line here. If they do lose this map, they will be out, knocked out in the quarterfinals. And they're the last Latin American team here that at least qualified through the Latin American qualifiers. So they want to at least have some sort of pride for their area. And unfortunately for them, it's not really in their favor. But right now, it's only a thousand gold difference. So it's not like it's impossible for them to do this. I mean, you're expecting a lot of dragon fights to break out here. Are we going to see what's happening anytime soon? Yeah, but it's just the situation in the bot lane is so back and forth. I don't think either team is in a position unless they get this gank off of this Wukong. He does have flash, he does have that the color, obviously. sitting in that brush, too. He's waiting to counter gank this. He's going to get spotted by that ward. All right, so... Oh, actually, we're going to see them go for the engage here. Wukong comes from the side. They do get a nice little ult, paired it with the Ezra ulti. Here comes Wukong. He does get slow, though. He's forced to flash into there, but we see a nice flash coming out of uh, Severe. Now, Tomax, he's in trouble here with that base damage off that ultimate. Getting very low on health, but he's going to be able to escape here. And not going to be able to turn that around, but a great escape, a great flash out of 1984, but that might have just opened up Dragon. Yeah, that was a really good threshold. And it, it managed to get the Wukong slowed for just enough time for the Sivir to get out. But yeah, they probably will get Dragon off this. If you look, Orianna just went back to base. Uh, Gragas has all the control in that lane, so pretty much free Dragon right here. Speaking of control, look at the CS lead they've been able to build up too. 94 to 72. That is, that's really starting to get out of hand uh, in middle lane. And in the meantime, top lane, we see a little bit of fighting happening here, but he's still there. He's, he's fair decently well, but. One downside is he doesn't have unlimited mana, basically, like JWoww does. Yeah, I think that's kind of nice. And also, you have that passive uh, that gives you the shield for trading. So, um, I think once he gets that static shiv, it might be a little bit rough on Jax. But on the same notion, if he goes Blade of the Ruin King, or even Osir a Gunblade, or some type of sustain item, I think he'll be fine. Well, 
And I'm really surprised that the Orianna is so far behind on CS when there's been not really that much jungle pressure. Like, all the jungle pressure, they just they spotted him on the ward. He hasn't really been ganked that much. And the Gragas Orianna matchup is really just dependent on the jungler pressuring the lane. And Shaywell, nice use to win war there. Blocks the Q out of uh, Nim, though I don't think it actually would have landed either way. But he's, his thing is, every time Nim has come towards his top side to go for a gank out of JWoww, the first time they both got low and, they're, and they were forced to back away and JWoww was fine on health. This time, just stops the gank with just his wind wall. Didn't even have a ward down spot from coming in, and he's committing so much time out of Nim towards his top side to help out uh, Accelerator that he's just unable to gank other lanes currently. Yeah, it's a really nice use of the wind wall, and he seems pretty confident on that champion. I uh, really like that. I mean, he just, he just doesn't care. He doesn't have a ward. He's just going to still play right up into them. And Wukong's going to be coming up here. He has ult just coming up. Um, he hasn't been back to buy in a long time, though. He doesn't have his Elder Lizard yet. But I'm pretty sure they'd win this 2v2. Especially with that knockup, Yasuo should be able to go to town here. Just have that zeal still done. So he's also actually going for a little bit of counter in here as well. Noticing that at least from his top line, he's like, all right, free raids for me. Might as well pick those up. And he's actually doing some damage onto uh, Orianna here. He does have his ultimate available. He does, he does get the ignite down and the auto attacks, but it forces the barrier and the flash. Also, will he commit to No, he's going to back away. Oh, he doesn't so have too low. much mana left. Yeah, I think if he had a little bit more mana, he would have probably went for that. In the meantime, you're actually seeing. Uh, also, well, they're heading down for the top, from the top side here for some reason. It looks like blue buff is really what they want to see happen. Oh, yeah. They actually fought down a bot lane, and Leona blew her ultimate. So uh, he ended up whiffing it, but it was at the cost of Sivir and Thresh's Flash. That's not a bad trade either way. I mean, that ultimate's not even on a long cooldown. And you're seeing them still try to be aggressive here. You're seeing Hado. He actually went for a Sheen. So he'll change that Triforce as we do see them go straight on the 1984. But a nice use of that spell shield does block the stun. And the hook does land on the Hado. They're going to commit this as Thresh ultimately comes down. But 1984, he just can't get close enough. He's just already so low on life. And they just turn straight on the Tomex. But now they're just falling so low. Also, one has to be careful here. But coming down from middle lane. Yeah, potentially the, looking for a kill. The Leon is just so beefy. Oh, provides no. much feeling. That is a slow. That is Wukong coming in. That is not going to have to save his life. They pick up the kill right there. So that's two quick kills coming in. In the meantime, Nim heading down. Does pick up one kill, uh, but not actually his uh, AD carry died, unfortunately, in the meantime. But now Dude, he's stuck here. He's going to be running he's, right into him. Oh, he does get taken down. But at what cost is Nim? Actually tries to flash over the Dragon Wall, but he gets taken down. And that was a two for three trade right there. I've only two seen for that four trade, in, sorry, for Also World. I've only seen that least in flash two times in this game, and both have been straight into the wall. <laughs> Maybe it's his style, maybe it's him saying he's not afraid. He's playing mind games with him, man. <laughs> he's like, they'll just flash over the wall, and I'll be still chilling here on the other side. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now JWoww with Accelerator actually in base. We're having a pretty big goal lead build for us. We're only 14 and a half minutes in. It. What's at that 5k mark? Yeah, that Yasuo top. sure if he's supposed to win that match. But this Jax has red buff. That's the combo. That is the deck accelerator. And that is red buff going over to JW on top of it. Fantastic for them. Uh, fantastic communication as well. And now Oriana and he said trying to go for move up here. We do have more to come from the side. But you can see, look how scared they are to actually contest this. It's a 3v2. Their Jax is dead. Even though they don't have their ultimates up, I don't think they want to take this fight. And Oriana's ult still down. Leeson's ult is still down as well. Oh, he gets it with the spike! Last second, fantastic job. I haven't turned that one around at least, but unfortunately for them still, Orianna has not had a blue buff this entire game. Yeah, I think putting the blue buff on the Lee Sin and just denying it from the Orianna is just as good as taking it yourself. All right, now we see the bottom lane of Ocelot World. They dead even in CS right now, though we have the Triforce done for Haydal here, and they're actually starting to push up a little bit because of the rest of the pressure uh, coming in around this map. And Warden, he wants to take away the red buff as well. He wants to deny everything he possibly can, and I gotta the thing say, is he's actually behind in levels compared to them. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm actually really impressed with Ocelot this game. He's, he just came from top lane, he just came from their blue buff. He's been all over the map. Oh, well, he did just miss a kill down on towards the bottom side of the map. Hato was able to pick up that kill under turret, it looks like. And they're even gonna push in towards these double golems. I mean, right now, Ocelot will have full control of this bottom half of the jungle. Yeah, this is, looks like a pretty different Ocelot. He's just completely controlling his lane. He's roaming everywhere on the map. Um, he's just. He has the game in his hands. He's just doing whatever he wants to do. And all Wukong has to do is back him up, and they're just insta-pop anybody who decides to, decides to contest. And with being such a huge fan, I actually do see right now Morden getting engaged upon right there over towards the, the raid camp. And he's going to be able to escape here, but not without the cost of his ultimate being used. Yeah, that's both Wukong and Gragas ultimate. Um, they don't really have that long of cooldowns, and of course they have CDR for the jungle item, so that's not that bad of a trade. And at least he makes it out with his life. Um, they already have... Almost a, a five, they have a 5,000 gold lead, almost 6,000 at 16 minutes in the game. This is not looking good for Furious Gaming. 
Um, Onslaught's world, Onslaught world has such a good team fight comp, and once it comes to this next dragon, if if Yuri's game decides to contest it, it's gonna be ugly for them. And look at that damage. Oh no, the warden doesn't get over the wall, and that's gonna cost Star his life, or at least his flash. He does go down, and we're seeing flashes into walls, wards into walls. It's just not working out well. Yeah, it looks like Furious game is a little bit flustered, and they're just getting outclassed in the lanes right now. I mean, if you look across the board, speaking of that, I mean, top lane, 170 to 115 CS, mid lane, 153 to 120. The only lane that's really keeping up is this bottom lane, but Hado has those four kills under his belt. Yeah, uh, I don't know. The Ezreal already has his Triforce. He has the Vamp Scepter. They're going to probably pick up this next dragon. I don't see any way they're going to contest it. Even though Wukong doesn't have the ultimate, nobody's really in position to do anything about it. The Lee Sin's down there, but... I don't know. I don't really think that they could win a straight out fight against them. The thing is, JY is just constantly pushing his top, but it's it's pulling multiple members of Fierce Gaming up towards that top side. You see the bottom lane, a fight already breaking out here. Nice far getting very low. He actually flashed out of the Ezra ult to get saved by Nim towards the backside, but here comes Warren from the side. Tomex, I'm not sure if he's going to escape this. They do land the Q onto him. Here comes Onslaught. The ult's going to come out. It's not going to get the kill, but it will knock Lisa away, and it will basically guarantee them this dragon. Scumbag Onslaught trying to chaos the kill for them. That's like <laughs> Like in the rules of League of Legends, it's in the tutorial. Oh wow, that's very true. I'm going over to Osa World. They have an 8,000 gold lead almost right now. It's just slipping further and further into their own hands, and I'm not really sure. I don't know if you can think of anything either where Fears can kind of get back into this. I would imagine it would probably be the best or the first thing. I don't think that's happening. Every time they walk in the lane to try to do anything, they just get butchered. Like, look, the Jax is just like, oh, I'm going to hide in this brush and hope you go away. Please don't hurt me anymore, bad man. <laughs> well, unfortunately, he doesn't go away right there. In the meantime, we're having an push out middle. Does have that blue buff available. So things in Holy Grail sitting on 800 gold. Does have a new solar draw as well uh, on top of that. So he's basically a full half an item ahead of his opponent right now. He's actually getting ganked in middle, but he actually does dodge out on that Sonic Wave. Borden off to the side to make something happen as well as Jay is coming down from that top side. We could see... Oriana getting dove on here. Yeah, I don't think she's going to walk up to that. Uh, that's pretty scary. Wukong, Yasuo, and Greg is sitting in front of you. And, you know, you were talking about how you're a big fan. Oh, actually, meantime, we see bottom lane. Another fight breaking out here. And Tay4 able to dodge Israel yet again here, forcing the flash at a dude. But at what cost, really? Because now it's a four on two, at least a three on three now. Because we have uh, Warden coming down from the top side. He's looking for that initiate here. Dio doesn't have ultimate available. Might have Zenith played in just a second. They're not going to go for the fight here. In the meantime, also on the backside, just harassing around Oriana here, and you can see they're kind of stuck here. They have to make a move. You have you know, Accelerant towards the top side pushing up, but we see the bomb turret go down. We see Nim getting pushed in a little bit too far. Here comes Osla. He's in that perfect position for the ultimate with the help of Morden. Luis actually go for it. He does use it. Spreads it completely apart as Yasuo comes in. They pick up one. Pushing that top end, looking for a turret, but losing a turret. Losing four men, losing potentially another turret on top, but it's not a good trade. And that's the combo I've been waiting all game to see. They had the Wukong ult, Dragus knock up, Yasu just came in and just cleaned everybody up. A really nice play. The thing is, he has a BF sword. He's basically close to his Infinity Edge if he wants to uh, pick that up next. Like, he's at the point where he's so damn tanky that Fierce Game doesn't really have an answer to it. I mean, Maybe a Thresh Hook would help stop him from doing anything in the build of fights, but how land that with the Wukong and Dragas, and yeah, that's just about it. I mean, so you have a many people stuff. flying at you. I don't think there's going to be anything going on here with that. Um, they just have too much of a lead, and Onslaught World basically would just have to get aced at Baron and then lose Baron. It's the only way I could see Furious Gaming come back into this game. And this boost of ability almost made it so more could actually catch up to Accelerator right there, but in fact, just going to back away. And it's a big fan of Wukong in the jungle. Is this a typical item build you can see out of them, or is this something you'd like to see? I mean, the boots are all situational, uh, really by choice. I, I don't particularly like the boots and mobility, but they don't have that much CC, so I'm fine with it. You just want to get, like, Murtred, so. And, of course, he's going to just turn that giant spell into a random one. And he's going to be the tankiest thing ever. And then he'll eventually finish that Black Cleaver, if the game even gets to that point. Um, it'll just armor share for the, uh, the Yasuo and the Ezreal. Funny enough, look what Dio's picked up. He's got the shield, but it's 
didn't come in until like a lot, uh, not that long ago. He actually didn't start in the lane about it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's kind of weird that he would uh, go straight for that Dorn. Like, I don't think you really have to start Dorn Shield on uh, Leona. I think you can get away with going to targets. Look but, at uh, the damage that JWoww does. We actually accelerated flashing out of that Wukong ultimate. He does get that up. Uh, uh, ultimate available right now, but he's going to actually lose a turn in the meantime, and he's going to be able to commit, still get some CS here, but uh, on all fronts, Oscar World is just controlling turret. the game. One last turn on the outside of their base. That's all they're going to hold on to. So they pretty much have really heavy control around Baron now. I think what Oscar World needs to do right now is they just need to, they have really good vision around Baron. They can deny all that, and they just need to contest that. And they need to pull, the pull on Oscar here with the red buff. The ultimate coming out completely spreads them apart. Now Tomex might get in trouble here as Morden. Try to chase him down, but said he does just back away. Gonna keep this advantage that they've been able to build up here. And not to mention, j -Wild's not really in the vicinity to help out with this one. But it is a, a little bait right there, but they still use that pink ward for it. Yeah, but now they don't have Threshold. Um, I don't think that they're too scared about getting engaged on uh, anymore. I mean, that's one of their main forms of uh, lockdown is that Thresh ultimate. Um, so, also, they're really far behind. Even if they hit that Threshold you saw, they didn't have enough damage in people in position to even kill that, that Gragas. And not to mention, also was able to pick up that death cat. Now his damage going through the roof. So hey, you know, going with that blade of the roof. And play the ring king and gone to a phage as well. So he's going to that tribal next. But I feel like he's not tanky enough deal with the team of Ocelot World with just that load of the Room King. I honestly feel like if it was the right fight, the Gragas and the Yasuo could 2v5 their team. Well, we're going to see that Orianna completely disappear. Maybe a couple of ultimates used there that weren't really necessary. They do pick that one up. Wukong does have his ultimate available. Yasuo is going to be up momentarily here. And they're going to continue barreling down on this inhibitor turret. I'm not sure if Fury's game can hold on to this. Yeah, that Orianna died almost instantly. And that's the beauty of that Gragas combo plus the Yasuo. You can engage from so far away and you have such a huge power spike of damage. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to defend this without their Orianna. That's their main form of wave clear. Sivir has pretty low range, even though they can clear with the Boomerang Blade. But I think they're just going to walk right up in there and just take this. And not to mention, also has that blue buff, so his ultimate's going to be on a quick uh, cooldown right now. They're going to start pushing in. They're going to get this inhibitor turret. That's going to fall very, very fast. And you see Dio just zone them out completely from this. They're going to get inhibitor off this as well. I mean, they, they're, they're approaching being 15,000 gold up right now. It's Haydaw does get high. Definitely locked down with the stun. He does get forced away. He's actually still escaping with a pair with a little bit of life. Right now. He gets kicked back in his team. He's going to survive this. And you're seeing j -Wall. Look at the damage he just did to Severe. The Orions are coming out. j -Wall gets very low. He's going to get shut down. But also turns around, picks up the kill. And somehow Haydaw is still alive. He's still trying to run. He's still trying to escape. His name is trying to chase him down. Will he have the team to back up? Yes, they do back up. Haydaw stays alive. And now we're seeing Oriana trying to run away. Going to hit the Lantern. Going to escape. But... You don't know what's going to be used there, just just because. You know, why not? Yeah, I can't believe Hadal lived there. It looked like he was trying his hardest to die there. He actually walked straight up to the Jax, high fired him, oh, got oh stuck no. in the face, and died. Oh, so Perro rolling over. Goddess Simon Overwall picks up the kill. He's now 6 0 and 6 in this game. Dragon's Brow going to come out as uh, the ultimate, especially get played away from that body slam. But look at the damage just did from the ultimate and that Q. And if he landed that body slam, that would have been a dead thrush. Yeah, the fat man kind of hurts at this point. He's probably going to go back and pick up most of the parts of his Void Staff. Yeah, he's sitting on right around the money for it. So even if they do decide to get any magic at this point, which they don't have the money for either, uh, he's just going to two-shot you anyways. And you know what's really strange about this? The Ezreal actually went with the Boots of Swiftness uh, instead of the Zerkers. He just wants to have that really high mobility build. He has Blade of the Ruin King that's going to give him the Speed Burst and the Triforce and the Boots of Swiftness. He's just going to be running so fast. The thing is, it's funny. is that that was the only fight out of this entire game that he was actually pressured in, in, a, in a team fight sense, where he, you know he got dove in the back. So that was his fault for getting caught. I feel like because he got stunned up and, and he, he got... didn't even get caught. He just walked straight up at the jack. He's like, "What are you gonna do about it?" <laughs> and then of course he got caught by like eight stuns and somehow made it out. I have yeah, no idea how. Right there. Uh, although right now we see also. I mean, they have control of this game completely. I'm really surprised that they're not trying to finish it anytime soon, or maybe even go for Baron. But we see the Grog Sparrow actually opens up. We're gonna see Accelerate drop instantly right there with the combo. And that is just Yasuo Gragas. Uh, yeah, that's so Yasuo Gragas right there. <laughs> Got in that double kill. We in the backside. Now Oriana getting caught here, trying to take that hate up. He just didn't have the damage he needs because he's so limited on farm. He's going to get taken down. And this is certainly going to be the end because they have the super minions in the middle. They haven't pushed onto these next turrets. They're going to go for the first one here. They're going to be able to pick this one up. And he's sitting in Thresh. There's nothing they can do about this. Yeah, uh, 
this game looks pretty much over. I don't think Thresh and Lee Sin's gonna be able to defend against all these all these bad people. Oh yeah, so he's gonna be kicked back into the turret, but he actually does stay alive. The Wukong also come in, they even get the kill on Tomex. So I should tell them that Kenny doesn't really matter right now. They can just finish this game, but they're gonna lock this one down. They're gonna pick this up and a clean sweep, a 2-0. Off the road, can advance on into side finals, play against Pain Gaming, and you hear the crowd cheering for them now. I wonder what's gonna happen when you have Pain versus them. Yeah, it's so funny. The Portuguese cast are telling us that Ocelot World's team is basically resilient to them. Uh, it was, it was at least in this particular matchup. So they're, they're, they're a little bit behind them. And you see that they, they've got to be happy considering how quickly they just kind of packed up everything and came down here for this event, coming in last minute, probably tired as hell from the fights on top of that and to not have that much practice. And even with all the, the I, I guess, sad things that's been happening to them, you know, with them not qualifying for the Coke League, uh, also leaving SK Gaming, making his own team here. This has got to be a nice little breath of fresh air for them to realize, you know, guys, we, we're still a good team. We should keep working at this. Yeah, I got to say, I was actually really surprised how well they played play that second game. Um, they won out right in the laning phase. They control buffs. They controlled objectives. Even though they didn't really control Baron that much, which I would have liked to have seen more. Mm -hmm. um, but they just ran them over in the laning phase. Like, every lane won. There wasn't, there wasn't even anywhere close. They just all won out right. They picked up dragons. They secured almost every blue buff and kept it from the Orianna, so she couldn't really do anything. And then they were taking red buffs in the least end, <laughs> so... Uh, they had a really nice team comp too. I really like that team comp. A lot of synergy, really good. What was your thoughts on JWoww on that top lane? Because I like I like being able to see a player that can play someone that's a tank like Renekton, and then be able to transition to someone that can play an aggressive assassin at the same time. Yeah, I really like adaptable play. Um, I honestly didn't expect him to pull off the Yasuo top. Um, it looked really good. I didn't know how I was going to fare into that Jax matchup. I guarantee the Jax has probably never even played this matchup either. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm serious. People will go into games. I'm like, wow, this is a, kind of an oddball pick. I'm not sure how to play this. So um, maybe got caught off a little bit, got a little bit caught off guard on that and played the matchup a little wrong, but uh, looked pretty strong. And uh, I mean, let's just go the, the kills for the entirety of all World. There's 6-1 and 5 for Wild on that Yasuo, 4-0-6 for Morden on that Wukong, 7-0-8 for Ocelot and Grog, it's 6-2-6 6 for Hayda on Ezreal, and then Dio d died once, 0-1 and 14. I just hope they all report Ezreal for dying twice. <laughs> Damn it, Hayda. <laughs> but yeah, either way, congratulations to